four or six minutes in house, video will be in about five minutes. Cab, love. What? Mini cab. Well, what about it? You called for a cab. Not me, love. I don't want a cab. Is this 246 Milton House? And, uh, what sort of shape, man? Well, it could be better, but I'm all right. Would you fancy a work out in the ring? Yeah, I don't mind, do you? Charlie. Charlie? <laughs> on the pavement, yes. In there, no. Come on, you cheer me up, aren't you? The man's a champion. A pro champion. So what? You're an ex-pro. You can handle it. Now, the thing is, his sparring partner couldn't turn up today. So, uh, I mean, you'd be wearing the headgear now. There'd be a drink in it for you. What'd you say? Yeah, all right. It's a bit short, isn't it, Kevin? It's worse than last week. And it'll probably get shorter. Another one of the drivers had an accident this morning. What happened? His motor caught fire. Badly. Cremated. He wasn't in it, was he? Oh, no, no, luckily not. So, rent's paid for this week, all right? Yeah. Well, that's something, I suppose. You're all heart, Arthur. Well, I can't afford to mix sentiment with business, can I? If it goes on like this, there won't be any business. Candy cabs. Yes, sir, where to, sir? In about five minutes, Channel sir. Four, Thank you. Rodge 48, make 193, the Grand Pion. Roger. What do you mean there won't be any business? We've lost eight drivers in a fortnight. Eight? That means we're down to 19. And some of them only come in when they want to. Well, why don't you advertise in the local papers? There must be geezers out of work with motors. In fact, the only way you can afford a motor these days is to be on the bloody doll. I have advertised. All these accidents. Do you know what I think? No. Someone's having a pop at us. Go on, Terry. He's wide open for a left hook. He's a mug at the game. If that don't work, give him some stick in the orchestras. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, don't just lay there. You OK, Tom? Of course he's OK. He slipped, didn't he? Go on, my son! Make him have it! Hey, hey, hey! What'd I tell you? What'd I tell you? Do shut up, Arthur, will you? Go on, do him in the orchestras, Terry! Not him! <laughs> What are you doing? I'm embarrassed. People are watching this, you know. It's not doing any favours for my image. Are you all right, son? All right, all right, of course he's all right. He should think himself lucky that my man has not quite recovered from a severe attack of pulmonary pneumonia, complicated by gastroenteritis. For God's sake, Arthur, give it a rest, will you? Come here, let's have a look at you. Yeah, sure live. That'll do you for the day. Anyway, go and get changed, son, go on. What's the matter? Are you drunk or something? 
Just leave it out, Arthur. It's different on the cobbles, isn't it? In here, they got a thing called the Queensbury Rules. Rules, rules are made to be broken, my boy. You could have done him. <laughs> yeah, of course I could. Anyway, I've got your bit of work. Doing what? Driving. Well, mini cabin. Arthur, if I wanted to do mini cabin, I could have done it without your help and without giving you any of my hard earned. I'm going to have a shower. Yeah, what? Hear me out, Terry. Hear me out. Accidents. Sabotage, more likely, Terry. I know it's a competitive game, mini cabin, but eight drivers we've lost in the last fortnight, and that is well above the norm. Stand on me. What sort of accidents? Motors breaking down. One even mysteriously caught fire. Calling the old bill. Ah, uh, ah, uh, well, no, no, that would cause a bit of a problem. Oh? Huh? Yeah, you know how it is. No? Well, in a word, tax. Pardon? Inland revenue. They crucify everybody these days. Questions like how much do you earn? No cabby wants that kind of aggro. They just turn it in and they go somewhere else. Yeah, and the authorities taking too close a look into your uh, bookkeeping wouldn't be too welcome, would they? I don't think I'm getting through to you, Terry. Someone is having a pop at me, and that is not in order. Not in here. And you get to keep whatever you take in fares. In that? What's wrong with it? What's right with it? I'm not driving around in that. Yes. Tell him what a terrific piece of machinery that is. Don't be deceived by appearances, Terry. That engine is tuned to perfection. Perfection. Cut the crap, Des. Terry, I can tell you this because I know your sound. But that engine was relied on by a certain little firm to get them off the scene of some very heavy tickles. Lively, you know what I mean? Oh. So you expect me to drive around in a motor that's been used? Not the body, you loon. Not the body. He's talking about the engine. The body it came out of has been uh, recycled. <laughs> what you might call my small contribution to our ailing steel industry. Look at those tyres, Terry. 100%. Is it MOT? I'll write one out for you. What about insurance? I have a pal who does a nice line in cover notes. But why can't I have one of them? Leave off, Terry. They're movable stock. Those I can sell. <laughs> Terrific, isn't it? <laughs> Kevin? Yeah, he's my partner. He runs the office. Just, just don't, don't mention it. Why not? He... Well, he's a family man. Warrior, you know. Good as gold, but not all that bright. Lacks a certain uh, vision. Take my point? Not really. Come on. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? A touch of the old world charm. We aim to please. Lovely. You're not serious? Of course. We need drivers, don't we? After we advertise luxury saloon cars. Well, so what? You don't believe that people really drink martini and fly in balloons, do you? What's that got to do with it? See what I mean? Advertising, it's all a con, isn't it? It's an illusion. People don't expect plush motors to waft up to their door. As long as it keeps out the wind and the wet and gets them where they want to go, do they complain? No, Arthur, we're not that desperate. I think he's right, Arthur. As a major shareholder in this little enterprise, Kevin, I think I'm entitled to make a few management suggestions. You're a silent, non-working partner. Very silent. Nevertheless, I promised a job to my nephew here, and my word is my bond. All right, Kevin, hang a left, and it's just down here on your right. Look, if you tell me exactly where you want to go, I'm sure I can find it. Don't worry, we're nearly there. I'm not exactly sure myself till I see it. Does he know the manor? 
Uh, would I stick him in if he didn't? Probably. Told you what the rent is, is he? Rent? You pay 25 quid a week for the use of the office and facilities, and it's up front. Hold on now. I'll, I'll lend it to you. Lend? Well, he make more than that in a day, won't he? And you get a radio thrown in, too. Can you get Luxembourg on it, Uncle? It's only on loan, mind. Those things are worth 300 quid a piece, which is about six times the value of the wreck it's going into. Kevin! Talking to Bricks. Hello, love. Kevin, you old sod. Who's having the pleasure of taking old Katie home today, then, eh? Who? Where's that nice young man? What's his name? Barry. Uh, I like him. <laughs> Just round this next corner and pull in, cabby. What do we owe you then? Uh, that'll be one pound sixty, please. You better pay the man then, Greg, aren't you? Oi! Mm. Right, come on, come on, come on, you old pest, on your feet, come on, upside down, yeah. Come on, come on, disgusting. There you go. <laughs> Mm, don't you go making a pass at me, young man. I'm a respectable woman. Oh, I'm sorry, love. It's just I find you totally irresistible. <laughs> well, you can escort madam home, then. Oh, thank you, squire. Mm. Oh, all right, then. Just to the car. Come on. Mm. Just to the car. Thank you. Memories. Come on, Katie. Yeah. Memories. the fresh air get up. <laughs> this one, love. Oh, yeah, not a little drunk yet. All right, all right. In you go, love. Like, mind your head, mind your head. You might have a fight to it. All right, you in love? That's it. Oh, thanks, mate. Mother told her to get on her bike. Ah, oh, it's a fair. All part of the game, isn't it? Katie's all right. She's not normally this bad. You want to see some of them you get? Yeah. I don't. Perhaps we ought to try for a better class clientele. Yeah, listen, look, get some new cards printed, embossed gold lettering, and shove them through the letterboxes of your Kensington and Chelsea mansions. You know, move up market. Oh, yes. I'm sure the average upper-class matron would just love to be picked up by your nephew's pig's tie on wheels. Arthur. Any cabs? Oh, come in. Yes, sir. Where to, sir? I've had seconds. I'm not going to do no, it. No, look, don't give me any aggro, Terry. Just give it a chance. Did you see the state of her? If you think I'm going to spend my time riding around with legless old biddies like that, just on the off chance that something might happen, you've got another thing. Hang on, hang on, listen. Kevin, I'm hurt. Who is that? Have you used your code? Over. This is Barry. Tango 14. I need someone to help me. Roger, 214. What's happened? Over. A couple of hooligans. Please send someone. I'm in Bishop's Lane. Barry? Tango 14. Come in, Tango 14. Over. The tables. Bishop's Lane. Come on. Well, come on. Where are you going? <laughs> Bloody hell. Don't worry, son. We'll get you to the hospital. There you are, Terry. Not nearly as bad as we first thought. A couple of days, it'd be as right as rain. Luckily, they didn't touch your motor. Phew, where is it? In the car park. Teddy here drove it over. He's a relation of mine. Yeah, thanks, mate. He no, just sorry. joined the firm. You get on well with him. Listen, Arthur, maybe the man doesn't want to carry on, cabby. Of course he does, don't you, son? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. What's to think about? Anyone get assaulted these days? It's all this urban decay. Do what? Oh, vandals, muggers. It's rife, isn't it? It's not only the cabbies who cop it, you know. While they were cleaning you up, I phoned the office. Kevin tells me you picked the fare up from a pub. Yeah. How many? One, two? Two. What do they look like? A couple of flashy young tearaways. Are they all look much the same? Yeah. I suppose you don't want to call in the old bill. No, no, no. no of course not. Yeah, it's what we pay our taxes for, isn't it? Police protection against hooligans. Take no notice of him, Barry. He knows the SP. He's winding us up. <sighs> Come on, I'll drive you home. No, it's all right. I can manage. No, don't be silly. Sit in. Good. OK, cheers. You know how to comfort the injured, don't you? Well, there's no point in losing another driver till I have to, is there? 
Where are you going? Back to the office. Make sure you'll get a radio stuck in your motor. Now, listen, Uncle. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do it or not. That's funny. I thought you already were. Yeah, right, OK. Well? I think he's getting a bit bottly. Says what we up on the spankings. But that's the bit I like most. Yeah, well, you would. Anyway, the message is leave it out and the motors for now. Why? I don't know. He'll bell us when he wants us to perform again. Well, there must be something you remember. The colour of their hair, clothes, boils on the end of their nose. Boils? Well, yeah. Distinguishing marks. But why are you so interested? If I know who they are, I can avoid them, right? I'm new to this game. I don't want to cop for what you've got. Oh, it happens now and then. Oh, I've had a few runners. Oh, yeah, runners? Who pay you with a knuckle sandwich before they have it on their toes. They, they know where I live. How's that? I don't know, but they said, well, if I, if I try to get them nicked, they'd pay me another visit. Did they say anything else? Something about maybe I should stop driving a the cab. They didn't specify candy cabs, though. No. Well, why should they? I don't know. But maybe you should take their advice. If I give up cab driving, how else am I supposed to get my family out of this dump? Yeah, I'll see your point. Now, oh, come on. There are lots of other driving jobs. Yeah, but on them, you have to pay tax. I pay enough tax it is in my regular job. You mean to say you've got a kosher job as well? I work nights in a bakery, I sleep in the mornings, and I do this in the afternoon and evenings. You must lead a really exciting social life. I got married when I was 19. I've got two kids. Three rooms in that Kazi. I'm not eligible for a council place, so we've got to buy. First time buyers. Now, don't have to tell you the price of property. <laughs> My wife's on the edge of a nervous breakdown living around here. Will you tell me how else I'm supposed to get the money? Don't know. Could rob a bank or get yourself a job in the mornings. Now, hold on, listen. Are you sure you don't remember anything about those two geezers? Well, one of them did mention the other's first name. Greg? Yeah, that's what he said. All right. No, no juice. Try the battery connections. Perhaps you better pop into that pub where you picked them up. No, I'm not open yet. Well, later. OK, try that. Yep, that's it. All right? Well, the radio is. Dave, I'll show you what it's all about. Turn the ropes, Dave. Can I have a word after? Yeah, sure. See you in a minute, Terry. Do you know, I've been thinking, Arthur. Well, keep practising. It'll get to be easier. No, no, <laughs> seriously. The more I think about it, the more I begin to think it isn't worth it. What isn't? This. Well, let's face it, it's only giving one of us a living. This is the on and off switch. This is the squelch knob. Cuts out static and interference. This is for volume. This is for channel one and two. This is to receive, and this is to send. It's as simple as that. Hmm? Could you go over it once more for us, please? I don't understand you, Kevin. Here you are, your own boss, men under your command, an independent spirit in this increasingly bolshy country of ours. Oh, don't talk garbage, Arthur. I'm a beaten slave to this business. I work 16 hours a day. Dustman takes home more than I do. Puts in half the time. Beaten drivers earn more on me. Yeah. Maybe we ought to raise the rent. But we already charge more than most firms. That's why we have trouble getting drivers. Candy cabs. Yes, what's the address, sir? Very good, sir. On its way. Thank you. Charlie, 12 Hall Road. Going to Oxford Street. Look, Kevin, I can understand you getting depressed. I'm depressed, but things are going to get better. I'm working on it. Have a cigar. No, thanks. See, the thing is, Kev, I don't see how you can quit. I mean, all your capital's tied up in the business. If you leave, you lose a lot. 
Yeah, but I wasn't thinking of leaving. I'm suggesting you pull out. Me? Why should I pull out? Well, for one thing, you've got plenty of income for all your other interests. This is all I've got. Yeah, and you wouldn't have this if I hadn't stuck up the 60% of the capital. Yeah, and I do 100% of the work. Oh, be fair, Kevin. I handle the promotional side. You pay for the cards to be printed. I find this ingratitude very hard to bear, Kevin. You're incredible. Well, I suppose we could come to some arrangement, depending on what you're offering. Well, I was thinking of giving you back your original five grand. Where would you dig five grand up from? Borrow it. Well, the wife's parents got a few quid tucked away. I just have to pay it back best I could. Ah, sorry. I couldn't begin to consider releasing my share at under, say, eight grand. Eight? Well, ten would be more realistic, but then I always err on the side of generosity. Anyone want a cab? Your code is Tango 64. Tango 64. Always use it when communicating with base, which is here, which is control one. Roger or Rog for short means message understood. Rog? Roger. No swearing or foul language over the air. We can get down for that. POB means passenger on board. So when you pick up a panther, you call in Tango 64 POB, Rog? Uh, POB, Rog. If you get lost, call in, ask for a direct or use your book. Book. A to Z. I ain't got one. Or buy one. RTP'd. How's it going then, Tom? Getting used to it? We'll never get used to this. You will. You know, that bleeding motor of mine uses more oil than petrol. <laughs> the state of it, I thought it'd run in steam. Yeah, mine. God, we should have seen some of the punters eye today. Dave here was uh, telling me about Barry. The driver who got beaten up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bad, was he? Well, I didn't look too clever. No, I'd be all right. Just lumps and bruises. No, there's too much of that sort of thing going on. What, round here, you mean? Well, everywhere. <laughs> but he's the third on this film in the last couple of weeks. Did they know who did it? No. They just rang in and said they weren't coming back to work. You've been done. Oh, a couple of dummy runs, that's all. But uh, Dave here had a pound of sugar put in his uh, tank a few days back. <laughs> Sweet, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily enough, I managed to borrow a motor. Or I'd been out of work. Perhaps some one of the drivers stitched somebody up and they got the ump with a firm. How do you mean? Well, I don't know, overcharged them or something. Ah, oh, come off it, man. What can you overcharge? A pound, 30 bob? You've got to be nutters to go to that length. Hey, to Rigby Road, usual destination. Uh, me and John were just about to go and have something to eat. Uh, let Terry take it. Yeah, let Terry take it. Candy caps? One minute. You're new, ain't you? 
Well, no, I've been around for a few years. I can see that. Now I'm at with candy cabs. Oh, yeah, with them, I'm as fresh as a wilted daisy. Right, where to, love? Oh, did they tell you? I do this trip every day by Sunday. Go to confession, then, do you? Hardly. I work at the Lotus Club, up west. What, a strip joint? I do artistic poses. Yeah, I bet you do. So that's where we're going, then, is it? The Lotus Club? Oh, back entrance, of course. Of course, the back entrance. Tango 64, P.O.B. Large Tango 64, message for you. Arthur Rang said, can you meet him in the pub? What pub? He said you'd know which one. Roger, Rog. That's, uh, £2.40. Call me Debbie. All right, Debbie. It's £2.40. <sighs> Here? Disgusting. <laughs> What's disgusting about it? You mean you obliged it? In broad daylight? In the car, in the street? No, not in the street. In the courtyard round the back of the club. Outrageous. <laughs> it would have been if I had. Oh, you didn't then? I will. I've got his number. Hey, look, Terry, I don't pay you good money to take up with slags. You don't pay me, period, Arthur. Gratitude. You hey, look, let's have it right. You are copying a nice few quid in fares. Copping what? Do you know how much I've earned? Driving that bleeding cab, in the traffic, sweating, carrying bags about, 18 quid. Yeah, and seven quid went out on petrol and oil. That wreck drinks it. And I got a parking ticket. Well, look, just give it time, Terry. Look, you've only been doing it for eight hours, not, not even that. And you're already 11 sobs in pocket. Only another 14, you'll be able to repay the rent money I paid out on your behalf. Do what? <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> no, no, that could no, that could wait. Wait? Oh, no, don't. Don't worry about it. Been a bit busy myself. Banking other people's money. I've been making a few inquiries about our two hooligans. A discreet conversation with the barman. And? See those two over there? Yeah. <laughs> One on the right's name is Greg. They were laughing and joking the other night, having a drink up and talking about a car that caught fire. The barman reckons he heard the words minicab mentioned. Yeah, aren't you, aren't you uh, gonna ask them to sort of help you with your inquiries? No, Arthur, not in here. Don't want to upset the barman after it's been so nice to you, do you? Perhaps I'd better wait in the car. What for? Um, well, then I'd be ready to follow them if they jump into a motor. Oh, I see, Arthur. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've got to be prepared, haven't we? Well, of course we are. No, right then. And if they start performing, don't worry. I'll be out of the motor in a flash. Of course you will, Arthur. You're Greg, aren't you? That's right. And what's your name again? Who's asking? You met a friend of mine. Oh, yeah, who's that? He drives a mini cab. He drives for candy cabs. You see, this morning, two buttonless bastards gave him a good hiding. 
So I thought I ought to talk to you two about it. I think you ought to be careful what you say, mate. As a kick in a cobbler's off an offence. Not what I mean. <laughs> Arthur, you look after this one. Is this one of them? No. I've never seen him before. Oh, bloody time, too. Oh, good morning to you and all. Have you had a look out your window? Uh, well, no, I've, uh, I've been a bit busy. What with? Well, uh, yeah, Debbie, this is Arthur. Hello, Arthur. Charming. No wonder you didn't notice my property being dismantled in the street. What are you on about? Take a look. Someone's nicked the wheels. Well, obviously. Oh, my good God. She does artistic poses. Hold on, hold on. It's one of my wheels. Oh, I wouldn't know a thing about that. You're going to try and sell me my own wheels? I don't know what you're talking about. I freely admit I bought them only this morning. But I know you'll believe me, Terry, when I tell you I have no idea where they came from. <sighs> He's only trying to sell me my own wheels. You should have kept your eye on the motor. This is a very rough neighbourhood round here. Now, look, the main thing is to get you back on the road. Now, look, Barry didn't recognise that kid, eh? Who? Barry. Barry, I don't... Oh, no, no, he didn't. No, I was thinking... I uh, think he was a bit frightened of the comebacks. Can't blame him, really, can you? No, I phoned the other two drivers who got done. They didn't want to know either. And they probably got the same message. Yeah. What I don't understand is how they know their home addresses. Uh, they probably just follow them home as a sort of insurance. So what now? Well, keep punting, keep punting. With any luck, those two hooligans will try to come back on you. Oh, thanks, Arthur. Yeah, and if they do, you'll be at liberty to use all your natural talents to make them divulge what it's all about, won't you? Take it from me. They are only the labourers. Who's paying for these wheels? You pay for them. Out of your tips. Yeah, yeah, OK, fine. Well? Turns out this geezer's working on the firm. He's only been with him a couple of days. And? Well, he wants us to sort him out. Oh, yeah. You can count me out. That geezer's a bit too useful. Yeah. Still, we could have a bit of a giggle with his mother, eh? Now, I'm sorry, madam. There's nothing whatever available for at least 20 minutes. OK. Terry, about. Mm, and no, no, I've gone out on the job. Can you tell me about his wheels? Yes. Best thing on the car, and they get nicked. Any, uh, anything else been happening? No, apart from the fact that only nine drivers have turned up so far, and I'm turning away customers. And the 28, Orville to Dickhead Road, Roger. Rog 28, make 14 Napier Street, going to Barnes. Roger, Roger. Candy cabs. No, sorry, sir, nothing here at the moment. We shouldn't be more than a few. Ignorant sod. Been like this all morning. I've got a blinded headache. I'll make you a nice cup of tea. Arthur, you thought any more about my offer? <laughs> Five grand? Uh, sorry. Couldn't begin to consider it. Well, I suppose I could go to six. No, I'm sorry. I'm not interested. Piss off! <laughs> Was that a punter? Huh? Probably. What's the matter with you? Aren't things bad enough without you insulting the punters? I told you I got this blinding headache. 
And quite frankly, Arthur, I'm sick and tired of working 16 hours a day to line your bloody pocket. Here, I'll tell you what. You have a taste of it. I'm going home. Tango one, Who is that? What? T Tango who? Tango one, two. He threw P.O.B. P.O.B.? What does that mean? <laughs> County cabs. <laughs> County cabs. Tango one, eight, mobile, Shepherds Bush, Green. What? No, 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 not what you. What? You, 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 oh, you want to go to Acton? No, oh, you, you're in Acton. Tango three, Tango, 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 Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute! Not all at once! Oh, bloody hell. Arthur, it's me, Terry. Arthur! Can I call a minute, George? Right. Caddy. Caddy cabs. Number one four. Can you give me a direction? Shut to up! Crescent Don't let us use that, of course not, don't you? Can't find it on back a bit later, could you? Up yours, too. Don't say that on the air, Kevin. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Hello? Hello? Tango 1 8 Mobile, Holland Park Avenue. What, what the bloody hell does that mean? Tango 1 4. Direct, please, to Crescent oh. Muse. What's happening? I don't want to discuss it. It has a disturbing nightmare quality. Yeah? Why are all the phones off the yonk? Because they keep ringing, Terry. They keep ringing. Uh, that's the idea, isn't it? Where's Kevin? Don't ask me to talk about that ingrate. After all I've done for him, helping to set him up in business, letting him run the place, giving him more than his fair share of the profits. Where's he gone? He's gone home. With well, he claimed a headache. And left me with one. What about all the other drivers? I don't know. I suppose they've gone home too. I want to go home. Oh, God. <laughs> I want a cigarette. You got a cigarette, young man? Sorry, I don't smoke. I want a cigarette. Stop the car! No, I'll tell you what, there's a shop round the corner. We stop there, all right? Yeah. But you stay in the car. Thank you, young man. You're very kind. Are you all right, love? All right. All right? I should bloody well say I'm not all right. Yeah, but you're not hurt, are you? Where's my cigarettes? <laughs> I dropped them, I'm afraid, while I was chasing this. Who's this, then? This is one of the gentlemen responsible for your little joyride. Joyride? Yeah, him and another big, brave thing took the handbrake off, didn't they? Where were you, then? I was getting your cigarettes. 
I gave you a pound. One pound. That's the last time I used this firm. Good. Little hooligan. Oi! Drunken old bat. Yeah, but later on, she'll be sober. And you'll still be in trouble. Now sit down, I want to chat. Didn't think you'd still be here. Well, why is that, Kevin? Well, I thought you'd have had enough yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I must admit, it did get a bit hectic. Yeah, well, now you know what it's like. Not easy, is it? No. No, no, I, I think you made your point. Yeah? I'm going to reconsider your offer. You are? Oh, well, that's great, Arthur. I think we could come to some arrangement in view of uh, recent developments. I, th I think developments, that's a key word, I think, don't you? No, it's got to be, got to be. What's all this, then? Oh, we're, we're not open for business today. In view of these uh, developments, I thought I'd call a meeting of the board, i.e. you and me. Oh, Terry's here in what you might call a supportive role. Oh, yeah. Yeah, before we go into the details, I think it might be instructive for you to have a look at something. Terence? I got this from the planning department in the town hall. Interesting, isn't it? What is it? Well, this is what they call in the trade a blueprint. It's a blueprint of a new shopping precinct. Yeah, well, it's all very interesting. <laughs> What's it got to do with this meeting? Lovely, isn't he? Terrific. Come here, I'll show you. Well, see that? That's a car park. There's your bank. Shops, various. And here, where Candy Cabs now stands, a supermarket. No, I'm not with you. You're bloody right you're not with me. You thought you could cheat me by hiring those hooligans to put the frighteners on the drivers, run the business into the ground and buy me out cheap. Then bingo, make a bundle out of selling the freehold of this place. But you forgot to take into account my deep-rooted instinct for knowing when I'm getting turned over. Yeah, all right, so you've found out. But it's you that's been turning me over all this time. Anyway, you're forgetting something. I still own 40% of the business. True. And in view of your legal position, that is, incitement to GBH, arson, conspiracy to defraud, I have decided to make you a very generous offer for your share. Two thousand pounds. Two thousand? Now, wait a minute, Arthur. One, then. You can't do this. It's robbery. No, Kevin. Hitting old ladies over the head and taking their handbags is robbery. Everything else is business. Yeah, but Arthur, I haven't got anything out of this. Yes, you have, my boy. What? Yours to keep. That! 22, 23, 24, 25. 25 quid? It's worth more than that for scrap. Terry, it is scrap. You're lucky to have a mate like me to take it off your hands. But we bought it off you in the first place. Yeah, but it's been used as a minicab since then and been in a pile-up. <laughs> you ought to be paying me to take it away. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks a bunch, pal. For a friend, any time. You're making a wonderful investment here, Mr King. You see, under government law, the government insists you have to buy the car in order to get the number. So you're not just getting your own personalised number plate with your own exact initials, you're also getting a wonderful little runabout for the wife as well. Not bad for 250 quid. Not bad at all, Des. 125 each, eh? Hmm. 
Have you met my partner? 